Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. We spoke about the global market action, but how will these overnight cues impact the Indian markets? We have our research team joining in bright and early to tell you just that. What's the trade setup looking like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news, and the action from the FNO space as well. Hi, guys. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, Vinny, let me come across to you first up. What is the market setup looking like today? Good morning. So hoping for a better start than what we saw in terms of last week because last week Nifty actually declined for the fifth consecutive session on Friday. It was below the 50 EM level, uh, the Nifty 50. Now overall there were top drags that came in from the banking side, especially HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank and even Reliance Industries was down. So that was the top drag on Friday for the Nifty 50. Mainly the reason for the fall last week, geopolitical tensions that were continuing, the outflows that we saw in terms of the flow from FIIs, that is also a concern that we are keeping an eye out on because versus Asian peers which are cheaper, where FIIs started investing, so keep an eye out on that. But. Uh, the week gone by was not quite exciting in terms for Nifty, Nifty Bank. Worst week in 2024, um, the highest number of FIs sold. We have seen 40,500 crores approximately of uh, equities that were sold by FI in, uh, 20, uh, in the last week. Now, cues for today that we should be watching out for. Iran, Israel, those tensions in West Asia, that is continuing. So that's a bit of a concern. But the handover that we got from the U.S. market, not a bad one. U.S. job data was quite strong. Uh, so yes, that's keeping a bit of a positive sign. Plus a lot of reactions that we'll be seeing coming in from the business updates in quarter two over the weekend that we've seen in terms of numbers. Important to watch out for a hybrid policy, mon uh, monetary policy meet that is happening this week. Corporate earnings, geopolitical tensions, and U.S. inflation are the key data points that we're keeping an eye out on. Nifty implied open indicating a positive start right now so yes keeping an eye out on that okay all right so that is the market setup expecting a decent start for our own markets but a lot of stocks that'll be on our radar now we have quarter two updates earnings starting Vamakshi has that list. Good morning, Vamakshi. Well, good morning, Sona. Let me first start off with a couple of Q2 updates. Uh, first one uh, is from Titan. They've registered a growth of almost 25% on a YOI basis. They've added 25 stores. Their jewelry segment has seen a growth of 26%, while their watches and wearable segment has seen a growth of nearly 20%. Indicin Bank is the next one on our radar. Advances are seeing an uptick of almost 13% at 3.57 lakh crore. Deposits too were up nearly 15%. The CASA ratio however has declined to 35.9 percent on a sequential basis federal banks uh, uh, you know update also on our uh, radar total advances up nearly 19.3 percent total deposits were up 15.6 percent the CASA ratio has improved sequentially for federal bank to 30.07 percent macrotech developers reported pre-sales uh, uh, a growth of almost uh, 21 percent collections were also up 11 percent Goodrich Properties booking value saw an uptick of 3%, but more importantly, the collections were up nearly 68% for it. Uh, other stocks in focus on the back of Q2 updates from the banking space, we have IDBI Bank, Union Bank, Indian Bank, uh, Bandhan Bank, among several others, NBFC's uh, l &T Finance, Tunawala Fincorp, and from the other space, we have Adani Wilmar as well as Metropolis in focus. But apart from that, Gravita India's board has approved fundraising up to 1,000 crores via uh, issue of equity shares. Uh, the Mahavi Prasad Agarwal has resigned as the chairman and in his place, uh, the managing uh, director has been re-designated re as the chairman come MD. SBI and MTNL also in focus because SBI has downgraded MTNL account to NPA with effect from September 28th and SBI's total outstanding exposure is at 325 crores. The overdue amount is 281 crores. So keep an eye out on all of these counters. Okay, we will do that. Thank you so much, Pamakshi, for that. Uh, let me go across to Mangalam now. He's joining in with all the cues from the FNO space this morning. Good morning, Mangalam. Good morning. So, you know, Friday, the start was good as well. What's important is how the market ends because towards the end, we saw a big decline from the highs for both the Nifty, the Nifty Bank, down almost 500 to 900 points from the highs. The mid-cap index itself was down about 800 points as well. So now we are getting some, uh, you know, conflicting cues. What are the conflicting cues? On the way up, strong U.S. jobs data has yet led to you know, U.S. markets doing well, the gift nifty doing well as well. But then at the same time, you have the tensions between Iran, Israel. Uh, uh, and, you know, we will watch out for how the market reacts to the Haryana JNK exit polls as well. The third thing that we're watching out for is the way the FIs are selling in cash market. In fact, over the last four trading sessions, they've sold nearly 40,000 crores in our market on uh, you know, Friday as well, nearly 10,000 crores. In fact, that's been the average cash selling for the FIs over the last four sessions itself, a little over 10,100 crores. Not only are they selling in uh, cash, they're also selling in index futures. So they sold about 5,300 crore in index futures on Friday as well. And as a result of which, they've uh, you know, 
unwound around 28,000 longs, added around 53,000 shorts. And if you look at the FII net exposure, that has dropped from a massive 3.38 lakh and 81% long exposure on September 30th to just about 83,000 contracts on the long side with 58% long exposure. Who's buying the FII selling? It's the HNIs and the clients. Because we've been talking about how the clients have been gradually increasing their long exposure. Now with the last four trading sessions itself, from a long position of 37%, they've gone ahead and increased their positions to around 52%. And also, the long contracts have come to around 32,000 on the positive side. So that's something we'll definitely keep an eye out on. Is there a bounce in sight for the near term? The 50-day moving average for both the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank are crucial to track. The 50-day moving average, we're just about there, 25,000 for the Nifty uh, and cl close to 51,550 for the Nifty Bank itself. The 25,000 mark itself is an important fulcrum as well. We have the 25,000 call and the put, both of them extremely active in trade. So maybe a 200-point range on either side of 25,000 on the Nifty is what the street is looking at. The street is also looking at GNFC, a stock that enters FNO Bank. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Mangalam, for joining in. That is our Power Prep segment.